Right. Well, that's a great segue, Governor, because I wanted to ask you, I was actually re-watching your interview on the Joe Rogan experience from, what, 2015, 2016, and he was practically begging you to get in the race as a third party or independent candidate. Of course, you know, we had the two miserable options of Hillary Clinton and uh, Donald Trump. And now looking forward to 2024, it looks like we might once again be faced by two completely unpalatable options, potentially Donald Trump again and most likely Joe Biden. Um, do you ever think about, you know, maybe getting in for one last run? And, and if I not... Do you think someone else should? Do you think they need to do that in order to stave off, uh, as you call them, the what do you the the Democrats and Republicans? Republicans, yeah. Um, I'll put it to you this way: I don't have the energy today to go out and get ballot access in all fifty states, and each state. See, the, the Dems and Repubs make it this way, so there's no challenge to them. Each state's different. So you have to have on the ground people in all 50 states getting you ballot access, and you have to do it probably a year or more ahead of the election. So if I was going to run in 2024, it would have to start now. Getting ballot access in all 50 states. If, if you guys want to take charge and make that happen, feel free. If you can do it, I'll make you a promise right now. You get me ballot access in all 50 states, I'll run. That's a pull quote. And I'll get into the debates because I'll shame them. I'll go on television. I'll call them out for being the cowards they are if they won't let me in to debate because you got to be able to debate them. But I've always felt if I have ballot access and my name's on the ballot in 50 states and, the and I get in the debates... If I can de if I can debate them, I can beat them. It's that simple. And oh, if it was Biden and Trump, that would be a field day. Oh yeah. yeah. That would be a field day. If it's Ventura, Biden, and Trump, and I got access in all 50 states, you guys are talking to the next president. Well, um, I did have another question for you, Governor, sure. about the third party movement. Obviously, okay. we talk a lot about third party movements here on the Vanguard, and we advocate or platform, third party, and independent candidates whenever possible. Um, and since you're one of the few successful candidates to win a major election, obviously the governor of Minnesota as a third party candidate, um, can you just talk a little bit about some of the challenges you faced and, and also those that you overcame uh, having to fight not just one party, but both parties as the governor of Minnesota? Well, getting elected, uh, facing the two parties, truthfully was the easiest part because I never ran against the two candidates, Skip Humphrey or Norm Coleman. I lumped them into their political parties. I said, these are just, uh, you know, these are puppets. These guys here that they got that do, they want you to elect are nothing more than puppets. They're puppets to the Democrat, puppet to the Republican Party. So I ran against the parties. And if you run against the parties, it's easy. They got so much baggage. They got so much negative you can pull out on them. And all you got to do is bring it out. They can't run from it because everybody knows about everything that they do. Now, governing's a whole nother thing. Now, I got in as governor. I was fortunate for three years. And here's how. I had a Republican House and a Democratic-controlled Senate. And I was the independent governor. Well, generally... Whoever I sided with prevailed. If I sided with the Democrats on an issue, they tend to prevail. If I sided with the Republicans, the House tended to prevail in the end. So I was actually kind of the person that caused things to happen by who, which side I supported on the particular issue until the third year. Now, here's my campaign thing for the, for the United States. Everyone in this country is very frustrated because we're so divided, right? Right, guys? We're, we're divided. And there doesn't seem to be anyone that can bring us together. I can. Guaranteed, if I won the presidency within three years, 
you would see the Democrats in bed with the Republicans. They'd both be singing Kumbaya and opposing me. Because that's exactly what happened the third year in Minnesota. The third and final year, the Dems and Repubs got in bed together. They overrode my budget. They submitted their budget. I vetoed it twice. They both together overrode my veto. I then fooled them. I was going to get stuck with their budget. I didn't run again. I went off in the sunset. They were left with their budget, and guess what happened? Minnesota faced a $5 billion deficit because their budget was not fiscally sound the way my budget was. And so the state of Minnesota ended up paying the price because these two parties were out to get me in the last year. And I outsmarted them. I took off and went to the private sector, left them holding the bag of their what they did in an attempt to get me. And of course, then they tried to blame the deficit on me after I left. And I had to call up the paper and say, how quick you forget that they overrode both of my vetoes on that budget. By the way, I hold the honor of being the most veto governor in Minnesota history. I had the most vetoes. Why? Because I had the ability to line item, where in a bill you can take out little, all of their BS where they're paying back and doing their payola. Well, if, it, if something didn't fit with the bill, I threw it out. Let it stand on its own. It don't belong in this bill. I did that 115 times. Took things out of bills that had no relevance to that bill. Well, that's a common maneuver, right, in Washington. Oh, yeah. They'll just, they'll just oh, shove everything a, in there. Oh, once a bill, they think it's going to pass. Then they put all these other things onto it. And then you're left as a, as a, as a representative, you're left with a dilemma. Do I vote for the original good bill with all these attachments that are horrible on it? Or do I vote against it now because of these attachments? And that's how, see, they don't let anything stand on its own. Bills should stand on their own. They should not have irrelevant things put into them, which is what they all try to do to satisfy all of their donors. See, they gotta they gotta satisfy their payola people, you know, the people that pay the way for them to get there. When I ran, didn't accept one dollar of PAC money, and I never met with a lobbyist in four years. Can you imagine that? Imagine how they wanted me gone. You know, you know lobbyists it, couldn't get in to see me. It, it's interesting when when you ask Gavin too about what third parties and, and people you know and activists you know kind of pushing a third party thing and what they can do to try to to try to win and it, it's kind of I think number one is a we have to stop getting seduced by the the American Idol glory of national politics and focus more on on you know getting onto city councils and and commission you know state commissions state legislatures things like that because that's going to be the easiest the easiest victories that you can amass if you're truly trying to to start a, a third party movement is take the legs out from under them yeah you know start winning on those state and local elections because then you can get a groundswell of candidates plus you can then potentially find candidates that could uh, rise to a national level who then also have a record that that shows that they truly believe in the ideals that you want them to believe because they've been forced to then vote and act on those ideas on a state or local <laughs> level. And then, you know, I think that's extremely important for third party politics to succeed in this country is, is to start at the bottom and work your way up instead of trying to kind of take it on from the top and, and go there. Because to me, you're not, it, it's going to be a harder, uh, it's much more difficult yeah, because the two parties make it that way. They make it so difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, right. we have to jump as a third party candidate. You got to jump through 50 separate hoops to get on the ballot. And do you know what could be done locally that would throw a wrench into this whole thing? And this could happen locally. Why do we allow political parties on the election ballot? Yeah. Why not just names? Right. 
No party. Don't let them put. What's a party on there for? It's on there to be convenient so that if you're conservative, you don't have to know who the right. guy is. You look for Republican. It's if all you're liberal. You look for Democrat. Well, if you took the names and that could be done locally, you could vote to remove those names, political parties from the ballots locally. Then it would force the people to educate themselves. Right. What does John Smith stand for? Rather than going in, not knowing one candidate and simply voting Democrat or Republican, I'd rather have them no labels and let them go in there and do eeny, meeny, miny, mo, rather than what you got now. You it know, also, I would. I'd rather have somebody go in and say, well, here's six guys, one, two, three, I read, and, and, and two choose you. You know, I'd also, rather have that. That kind of thing, too, would also help uh, as well for being able to decipher who within the party is truly somebody fighting for the, the, the root morality of, let's say, a Democrat. Like, you know, when you have the big fight between corporate Democrats and like progressive Democrats, it then allows the voter too to know, OK, is this per is this person within the party? the person I want to vote for, as opposed to just saying, oh, well, I guess there's a D next to their name. So that must mean they're they're for, for all my ideals. You know, and I think that's important. The other thing, too, that has to, that, that has to change in, in third party politics in this country is the nitpicking within the parties, or oh. within the movement. That has to stop right away because you're never going to beat the Democrats or Republicans if you're constantly fighting amongst yourselves. Yeah. For the, you know, like, you know what? You know when I dabbled with the Green Party and running la the last election, do you know what half of the facet of the Green Party came forward with? What they questioned, they went, "Well, is he one of us?" Yeah. And I said, and I said, "One of you." What are you? You know, look at my voting record. Look at what I did and what I stand for. Am I one of you? And so there's this eliteness. I really believe the Green Party don't want to win. I really do. Because they don't do anything to win. They, they do things simply to, I guess, stir the water or, you know, uh, I don't, I'm not sure what they're trying to accomplish. I really am. The Green yeah. Party has me mystified. Governor, I was so frustrated because, you know, even regardless of winning, the Green Party needs to get to 5% to ensure that they can get federal funding to even be competitive or competitive in, a, in the next election. And, you know, who better than yourself to get them at least there? Oh, you know, I think you this. could have won, but you Wait, definitely would have got to five. Get this, guys. Fox News, right? When I dabbled, they threw me in a poll. I was already at 18%. And the Green Party turns me down. Yeah. It's I'm at 18% just saying I might run. Right. Right. Now, I and totally the green, agree. And the Greens didn't want me, or yeah, at least I, half of them didn't. It was such a disappointment. I ended up voting for the Green candidate, Howie Hawkins, but I, you know, I was just so disappointed again because they're asking people for donation. They're asking people for yeah. time and money, and, and they're seemingly not embracing what would clearly be their best option. Again, regardless of winning, even just uh, being taken seriously or getting to 5%. So, and, and why wouldn't Howie Hawkins have stepped aside for me? Right. He offered to do so for Bernie Sanders. He didn't for me. Exactly. It's, it's never yeah. offered to do that for me. Yeah, no, I was so disappointed. <laughs>